Hello again, everyone. I'm still playing with uh, this Sizzix set of Ikebana dies. And uh, you may remember I used um, a background die on a previous card um, with jumbled up lines. This is another one from the same manufacturer, m memory box. This is just vertical lines. Um, and I thought I would put one of the papers I was thinking of using in that other card behind this one. So I've got this sheet of teal, beautiful deep, deep teal. Um, so I thought I would have that behind this aperture. I have a few brown of these twigs left, but I thought with that, black would go better. So I cut out the whole set from black card. That's for that. And I thought I would use this um, container. I called it that one the other day and actually I was using this one. Looking back at that video, I have to apologise. I called a stamp a die twice. I, I said um, the left was right. Honestly, you must excuse me. I, I know what I mean and I hope you can kind of just follow if I say the wrong thing or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> that, that's the apology over. We'll, we will go forth. So I want to use this one and I cut it out in white and I thought I would use a technique including some gilding flakes. So what I thought I would do, I would try and match this colour, this deep teal. So I picked out from my luscious powders a colour that's called teal and this one called green, which is what I put on here. And it's absolutely nothing like the background. So I carried on playing and this is what I came up with. Which I think you'll agree goes far better with this colour here. So I'll just, and I think it looks more like a, a pottery dish. So I'm just going to tell you now, or show you how I did this. So rather than start with a white base, as I did here, I started with a black one. So cut it from a piece of black card. And the first thing I did was to cover it, whoops, the daisy nearly lost the, the one I've just already made was to cover it with glue. And this is a Nouveau glue pen. Just cover the whole thing with glue right the way over. Okay, there's my glue. The next thing I did was to get a few gilding flakes and I just want the odd fragment here and there. So pick up with a pair of tweezers, it's a bit big. Just move it around a little bit. I just want random bits of gold. The Japanese make absolutely wonderful pottery. Some beautiful, beautiful things. I'm fortunate enough to be able to visit Japan a few years ago. I started on a cruise, flew to Tokyo and then went up the islands. Amora. It was just, just a wonderful experience. And the Japanese people were so, so polite, so welcoming, so clean. So I've got those two colours again. So I'm going to add the two colours that I added to this one, but onto the black base and see where we go with this. Here's my soft brush. It's a, a perfect pearls brush. So a little bit of each colour onto the glue. I haven't burnished the gilding flakes, you notice, because if I did, I would push fragments all over and then there wouldn't be enough as much space for the colour to be added. So here's the green. There we go. Right, now put the lids back on. 
and now is the time I'm going to burnish. So this is what I did. Now if you look at this, you'll see that they don't look the same yet, do they? So what I did, I just kept going. This time I added some black luscious. This is called Blackbird. So at the minute, there's nowhere for it to stick because I have covered it with gilding flakes. I covered the glue with gilding flakes and powder. So what I did actually was to get an old Versamark pad, which is kind of dirty. And I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom there so that the, the black that I'm adding will look a bit like shadow. Adding it to one side here. And I'm going to put a little bit just along the top, just to define that top edge. Okay, let's try that and see. So now I'm going to use the Blackbird. I've moved my light further up to see if I can stop the flickering. My new one's supposed to be coming today. But to me, it feels really dark here because the light is way up high. Okay. Put the black on. Around this edge here. There we go. We're getting there, aren't we? You see. Nearly there. There's something else that I did after this. And I'll show you what that was. Okay. Give that a little burnish round. Right. Now I'm just going to wipe this up. I hope I can fix this new light up. It's got to go into a, a USB. I'm hoping that perhaps an iPhone adapter thing will do for it. We'll see. We will see. Okay. There's that wiped up. I'll just get a paper towel and dry it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze it. And to glaze, I'm going to use my dirty um, Versamark pad again, because if any of these powders transfer, I don't want them to go on my pristine one. Okay, there's some Versamark. Here is my clear embossing powder. I'm just going to pop this. Oops. in there. There we go. Okay. Now just heat the of that. That's gorgeous. Now, there's one more thing I did. Can you see the difference between that and that one? It's the shaping with uh, an embossing mat and an embossing stylus. Just make sure that that's all dried off because if I put that and it's molten onto here, it'll smudge it all. So with an embossing stylus, I want the, uh, the ends sort of rounded looking the bowl and then when I add this to the card I can put a piece of foam tape along there to keep it to keep it standing proud okay now there's another couple here you may see that I've been playing with these two I did with one another one of those um, six vase dies 
and I cut one, some of the uh, stems, put them on, uh, stuck them on. This one was coloured with uh, Distress Ink, uh, Festive Berries, Distress Oxide, and then once it was um, dry, I added some gilding wax, this PBO, PBO gilding wax. And then I decided I wanted to emboss that as I'd done this. But the um, the embossing wax on the gilding wax, should I say, on the stems had gone a funny colour. So I just did it again over the top and that was fine. This one, I used this shimmer powder. This is Nouveau Shimmer Powder. Um, same sort of thing spritzed it with water when it was finished. I had some uh, new, um, Versamark for it to stick to, stuck on the branches, and then just gilding uh, wax on the top. So that's, you know, it's all, it's all playing, it's all the same thing. So now I just want to wipe my fingers in the ordinary way. I, if I wasn't doing a video, I'd pop along to the bathroom and give them a good wash, but this will do for now. Okay. I think we're clean. Now, I think this one, I am going to put that directly onto the um, backing, that teal coloured piece, because for some reason, which I don't quite understand, these middle lines almost seem to be longer than they were before they were cut, than, than the bits at the side. Now, whether it was a bit pushed when it was the paper was pushed when it was being die cut what well, I don't know so I'm going to join that to this and these are going to go over the top so round the edge I'm going to use my tape runner and behind those lines I'm going to use some glue just regular wet glue right Can't put it behind these because the glue would, this tape runner rather, would stick out and it, it looks awful. It does look absolutely awful. So let's just put some, this is a narrower tip. I'll just put this along here. Is it coming out? Can't see. Are you coming out? Doesn't appear to be. Let's try. Oops, I need another one. This one is a different kind. This is a like a ball tip, you know, but finer. Probably do. A zig. This is a zig pen. This is the last one. Okie dokie. Stick into it. Right, we'll pop this behind there. Okay. Let's just press it down. That's really strange how those seem, seem longer. Quite got it. Need to hold it perhaps. Bizarre. Still not under there. Let's just put a little bit underneath it. Quite bizarre. Okay. I'll make sure that's stuck later anyway, so there we go. Surprising how long it takes to stick. Probably putting something like this on it and then something heavy and leaving it for a moment would probably do better, but 
don't have a lot of time. So, okay, let's let's put one of these on here. Oh, yes, I've done that, haven't I? Let's start with a little bit of um, foam tape behind. There we are. And that should be sufficient to hold it. Okay, we'll pop it on. Like so. I love this. I really, really. Now, I'm, I've chosen, I thought I would choose, should I say, the, the tallest, the longest of these. That's the one to put on first. There. And then I want something to go to, to the right. That would be okay. And that's the one I found yesterday. They were going the, the wrong way, didn't they? They weren't going the way I wanted. Don't like that. I suppose whatever you do, it's all kind of similar, really. Let's have a look. Oh, can't find anything I like, really. Well, which is the one I used yesterday? That would do. That would do. I am thinking of, of putting a sentiment on this one. And I thought, thank you. But this is a memory box. This is memory box. So I thought I'd sort of keep it in the family. And I didn't know whether I wanted black on gold or... Gold on black. The other thing I'm thinking is this may decide what colour, which way round I do the the sentiment. I have decided that I'd have little gold flowers and black centres. I've cut a f few of the centres here. So um, I can just... I'm not going to stick them now, but just to, for you to see the idea. My little dish, larger blossoms at the bottom, getting smaller as they go up. Where the little nodes are, I'll just put arrange some of these little black things, the centres in the middle, just so that you can see. Perhaps we could decide whether... I think that looked quite nice. Now then, do we want gold on black or black on gold? I thought, first of all, that one, but thinking about it, this might be better in that these gold ones are going onto black there like that. My mind works in strange ways. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. Anyway, I will complete the card. You'll be able to see it on Instagram, on my Facebook page and on the community tab of my YouTube channel. The only um, problem that we have as far as um, the community tab is concerned that if you are looking on an iPad for some reason you can't access the community tab via an iPad. You can on a, an iPhone, you can on a laptop, anything else, but you can't on an iPad. So that's just a warning. Um, anyway, there's another one, another method for making a die cut come to life. And uh, as ever, thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking these videos and thank you for watching.